Hello everyone and welcome to Winshaw Studio 11 Advanced One Training. I am Mia Isola from Atzotech, your Winshaw partner in the Nordics, and I'm here to guide you through our three training packages, Basic, Advanced One and Two. These packages are designed for new Winshaw users with a developer license. We are now in the Advanced One training package, which includes multi-line recordings, reading from SAP, chaining scripts together, taking backups, and data validation. This is the first portion of the package where we will concentrate on multi-line recordings. That's using the loop feature. Let's dive in. When we say multi-line or loop, what we mean is documents with line items, something like an invoice or a sales order or a GL posting. In SAP, this usually means a transaction where we have the list of items and a header section above. What we want to achieve is a script that can handle any number of line items per document, whether that is two line items for this document and 25 for the next. The trick is how to make it possible for Winshaw to keep repeating the line item actions as many times as needed for each document. Winshuttle is unable to create each new line item on the next row in the list, but it can lock on to one row and keep repeating defined actions there. This means we need to do some thinking in SAP to find a way to use the same row over and over again. Usually we can find a button of some kind to accomplish this, buttons like insert line or add line. Using the appropriate button will push the existing rows upward or downward on the screen and free up the same physical row on the visible list for another entry. Most often, it's best to use the first row in the list, but it depends on the SAP transaction and the functionality of the button that we use. So go to SAP manually first and test out the steps that you plan to record for the script. The example here is from FB50 transaction in SAP, but same principles apply in other transactions as well. When you record your script in SAP, start by filling in the header section first, then press enter key at least once on your keyboard. This will separate your header data from the line item data. Now input the first line item. Using the list's first row, input the data as you normally would and press enter on the keyboard. Select that new row using your mouse and then click on the insert row button. At this point, the behavior in FB50 is such that the existing line is pushed down to become the second row in the list and a new empty first line appears. Now you can repeat the line item steps for another line item on the same first row in the list. R remember to repeat all the steps, that is input data, press enter, select the row and click insert row. Inputting two or three line items is enough, then you can save the document. Of course in the case of FB50 transaction, you need to make sure the credit and debit match in order to successfully save the document. When saving, it's okay in this transaction to directly click on the Save button. Next, we come to the mapping phase. The first thing to do is to set up the loop. That is, tell Winshaw what portion of the script needs to be repeated. For this, you need to go to the Expert view and from there, find the repeating screens and actions. Start by looking through the SAP fields and actions, noting that each light green row. Start by looking through the SAP fields and actions, noting that each light green row signifies a new SAP screen and the white rows below it give the content, the actions and fields of that screen. Now moving past the header data fields in the beginning, Try to locate the screen where you have the data entry for the first line item. Make a note of the number of that screen row. 
that is the light green row. Uh, let's call this screen row A. Then keep scrolling further and look for the second line item. Again, make a note of the screen row number and let's call this screen row B. Now to make sure that you select the correct rows, compare what you see just after screen row A and screen row B. If you see the same value for OK code and cursor positioning, as well as the same field names, you are good to continue. Select the rows starting from screen row A and continue all the way to screen row B, but excluding screen row B. Now you have selected the rows for your loop. So in the map menu, click on the create loop button and you will see the pop-up window. There are some instructions given, but take a look on the left side of the window. You need to define a column in Excel for indicators. These indicators will tell in Excel which row of Excel data is header data and which is line item data. This way we are able to list our line items on Excel rows rather than in columns. So we need a place in Excel to put the indicators, a reserved column for that purpose. And most users like to use column A. You can also define the actual indicators. The Winchell default values are H for header and D for details, as in line items, and these are used by most Winchell users. Once ready with the settings, click OK to accept. Now you should see an orange loop around the rows you selected before. This loop now means that this part of the script will be repeated as many times as it needs to, that is, as long as there are new line items in Excel. This also means that your script doesn't need the second recorded line item anymore, so it needs to be taken out. So scroll down to the end of the loop and select the following screen row. Starting from there, select all the following rows that are similar to the ones inside the loop so all the actions related to the second recorded line item. When you have them selected, right-click and select Disable. Now you are ready to move back to Basic View and do the drag and drop in normal fashion. Before running your script, you need to fill in some data on the Excel file. Write your header data in the appropriate columns and remember to also input the value H in the indicator column. Then write the line item data in the appropriate columns and add as many line items as you wish. Also remember the D values in the indicator column on each line item row. I also recommend that you input another document on the Excel sheet. That means putting in another H row with header data and a few D rows with line item data. Then you are ready to save your script and data files and test run your script. When you get the log message in Excel, you will see the actual message on the header row as well as on the last item row. SAP provides one message per document and this message is printed in two places for our convenience. The line items that are between the header row and the last item row will not show a real message. They will only say item row D, see log above.
And that concludes the first portion of our Advanced One package for Windshell Studio 11. Please join me in the next part, which will cover the download feature, so how to get data from SAP to Excel using a similar SAP transaction-based script. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining.